Tim Carter, and I'm here to talk a little bit about site clearing. It's time to get ready, you know, to, to dig the holes, but sometimes you're going to have things in the way like I do. I've got some small trees that we've got to cut down, and I want to show you a little bit about what it takes to just kind of scope out the site and look to see what you have to do. Let's go take a look. Okay, right here it looks like the impenetrable jungle, but in reality, if we just start to walk back in here, you see pretty quickly that things kind of open up. And this is right where the shed's going to be. But you can see, I've got some small, you know, caliper trees in the way. Like here's a little two inch one. There's a lot of smaller ones, three quarter inch, maybe one inch. They're not too big. There's another two and a half inch one right there. And uh, another one right there that you can barely see. And of course, here's a nice thing. Look at this. Here's a nice big boulder. That I've got a very special place for. You're going to see that uh, in a future video. And I actually hope I run into a few extra rocks as we go to dig here. But the point is, a lot of these trees have got to go. And more importantly, I've already kind of, I roughly took a tape measure back into this space here. I, uh, I discovered very quickly there's a very large tree there and one next to it. Those trees, luckily, they get to stay, and that's kind of a benefit because the shade from those trees is really going to be nice on this particular shed, and it's going to uh, offset and, and really look, look good next to the shed. But I actually used a tape measure. I kind of found out, uh, you know, the dimensions here where I have to put the shed, but I discovered that many of these trees have to go because you need to create about a three to four foot barrier around the shed so that you have room to work because when it comes time to put the siding on and when you have to uh, paint the siding and maintain the shed maybe you want to stack some firewood against it you're going to you're going to be really happy that you cut those trees out of the way and cleared the site so it's really that simple so you can see it's not that hard to actually, you know, do some site clearing. You may be lucky. You may be building your shed on a concrete slab or maybe just in your lawn and there's nothing to get out of the way. Well, that's good for you. That saves you some labor and time. But for those of us that are going to tuck a shed, you know, into some trees, you just have to go in there, start cutting and take them down. One, here's one quick tip. Let's say that you've got some big trees in the way and you're going to have some equipment there. A big mistake that a lot of people make when they uh, cut down trees is they cut the, tr the tree off too close to the ground. Well, if you're going to have a piece of equipment there to help you take the stump out, believe me, the operator is going to thank you if you leave about two or three feet of the trunk sticking up out of the ground. You know why? Because he can push against that or he can grab onto it to get that stump out. So go ahead. Don't be bashful. Leave a little bit of that tree sticking out of the ground. If he wants it cut off, you can always get the saw out and cut that extra two feet off later, right? That's the way to think about it. I'm Tim Carter from MasterBuilder.com, and I wish you the best of luck when you get ready to do your site clearing. If you want to discover more home improvement tips, go to AskTheBuilder.com.